Hey, this is Yazuki Wolf, and today I'd like to go over some basic terms used by manga artists in Japan. So, you see here I have a page set up here. Um, this is uh, one of my student works while I, when I was in school here in, uh, in Tokyo. And um, I have these two kind of dotted lines, uh, dot, dotted uh, frames, I guess, uh, put on the page here. And I'm going to explain what those are called in Japanese. The first one, which you see on the, uh, let me get my arrow here, we see on the top here, this is the tachikiri, tachikiri. So that's a tachikiri. Um, basically, this is the area where your uh, page will likely be cut by the print. So if you uh, look at the larger page here, um, you'll see that generally all the stuff that you're you want to have on your page, you want to fit inside of this outer frame, the tachikiri frame. Um, and uh, you'll notice around here, I do have, I do actually have a drawing um, that's going outside of the frame. Now the reason for that is that this isn't a hundred percent perfect line or like point or measurement, I guess. This isn't a, a perfect measurement of where the page is going to be cut by the print. Uh, there's generally going to be about a three centimeter, centimeter give or take of, um, of where the actual cut is going to be. So you want to be careful that if you were to just draw directly up to this line on your page and then stop drawing, there is a chance that you might end up with a one to three centimeter like just blank area at the end of your uh, of your drawing before the page before the the cut of the page, and I'm um, it may not be super noticeable, but it does look a little bit uh, unprofessional. So you want to actually give it some bleed and draw about three centimeters beyond the uh, tachikiri when you have um, some type of like element that's coming outside. So when you're actually having just general frames like these, you'll keep the frames probably well with well within the tachikiri, so the frame's not going to go outside of that per se. But if you have uh, this kind of open frame here that's going to be going toward the to the edge of the paper, then you want to have a little bit of bleed to draw at least three centimeters uh, beyond it. I go well beyond three centimeters. I usually draw almost to the end of the pa of the paper, um, even though there's a good chance that a lot of that's going to be cut and the and the reader's never going to see it. I just uh, still do that anyways. <coughs> so the that's the outer frame, which is called the tachikiri, and that's where it where the paper is actually cut. But uh, we have another one underneath here, which is the uchiwaku. That's uh, this this kanji here is pronounced uchi, uh, u c h i. I will I will include a list of all these terms in the description with um, the Japanese the Japanese writing and uh, Roman characters as well, in case uh, you can't read the Japanese. I also think I will probably do a series um, in the future teaching kana, because in as I go on to teach more Japanese in future videos, I, I believe that um, you will it will be beneficial for you to be able to read kana, because I'm not going to be writing things down in uh, in, Ro in Roman characters all the time. And if you are interested in learning Japanese, it is very useful to learn how to read this because if you come to Japan, things are not written in Roman characters. So there's no way that you can get get by without learning how to at least read kana, which um, is not the same as kanji, which are the Chinese characters. So don't get scared off that the Chinese characters, uh, there's about like 1900 plus that you should learn um, to, to live here. here. But I mean, if you just want to the base, the kana is only like a, is, is nothing nothing like that amount, so uh, don't be scared of that. Um, but uh, yeah, that's something I will do in the future because uh, part of the reason why I'm doing this uh, video series now is that I mentioned in a, in a previous video that I would like to s teach some Japanese in future uh, videos and uh, it seemed like there was some interest for that, so I, that is something that I would like to pursue. And uh, this is sort of the first introductory video where I'm kind of testing that out, uh, and then after this I'll probably get more into the nitty-gritty of teaching the actual basics of Japanese, like kana, um, that'd be katakana, hiragana, uh, maybe some basic kanji, grammar, grammar, and like basic sentences and stuff. But for now, we're sticking to something that is useful for not just people who are trying to learn Japanese, but also people who are just wanting to do manga or uh, learn more about manga in general. So the uh, going back to coming back from that long sidetrack, the uchiwaku. Um, uchi means like inside and waku means frame. So it's the inside frame. It's also maybe called the kihon waku, 
Um, this is kihon and waku. Um, kihon means ba uh, base or like, uh, I guess, pr primary, I, I guess. Yeah, base, basic or base is probably the best. So like the, uh, the, main, the main waku, there you go. The main frame would be the kihon waku, also called uchi waku, which means inside frame. And now this is, so the tachikiri is where the page is actually cut. But the uchiwaku is where you want to put the information that you definitely want your uh, reader to see, the most important elements of your page. So you'll see here that the actual um, frames here, and we'll, we'll, there's a Japanese term for those that we'll go over in a little bit, the frames all fit within the uchiwaku. Um, if you want the the reader to see the end of your frame. There are, of course, uh, situations where you may want to have the frame bleed out to the edge of the paper, like we were talking about earlier. And in those cases, yeah, you, you don't have to cut it off at the uchiwaku. It could go well beyond it. But even then, you'll notice here that the main uh, visual elements that you want your reader to see, you still want to put those within the uchiwaku. So... I wouldn't, for example, put this character, this is one of the, one of the uh, main characters of the story, so I wouldn't put his face outside here. Um, up here you see this character's face kind of being right on the line, and that's okay because this character is just a background character. He has no name. He's not important to the story, so I was fine with the possibility of him being like a little bit off to the side. But you want your main characters to all be within this frame, and anything that you, want your, that you definitely want the reader to see should go within the Uchiwaku. And um, another very important thing, this is uh, something that people miss quite often, actually, um, when they're beginners, is you'll see that the actual lettering for the, um, for the writing here, and this is, this is also called uh, se seifu. That's another word that we're going to go over in a, in a little bit, but uh, the dialogue is called se seifu. And um, this, but these dialogue letterings should fall within the uchiwaku. You don't want these to be go to go outside of it. Now the bubble, the bubble could go out a little bit, but the actual writing should stay within that framing, and that's a pretty uh, definite rule. You don't want it to go outside because there's a chance that it could be cut off, cut off, and become unreadable, unreadable in one way or another. Um, you may see that, say up here, I actually, I don't know if you could actually see this. It's kind of a, uh, it's kind of far away. Let me see if I could get a, a close up of it. Okay, so. You'll see here that I actually have some lettering right on the uh, the line. Now that is okay, um, as because it's not. This isn't like the the uh, tachigiri where it's actually getting cut. This is this is just a general like um, framing. So you, it's not going to be cut in half right at this line. So you don't have to worry about it being up on the line like this. Uh, but you don't want it to go beyond that line if that makes any sense. So like super close is okay, but you don't want it to go beyond that line. Um, hopefully that makes sense. So that's the, those two basic framing terms. Now the next thing I wanted to go over, let me switch the next frame. There you go. So you see in the middle here, we have, I have this red area indicated as the nodo. Um, let me get my Yajinushikun, there we go. So we have nodo. Nodo basically translates to mean throat. This is the throat of your of your uh, page. Um, I didn't actually say this earlier, but I hope it was obvious that this was not one page of the manga. This is actually the left and right side page, right sides of uh, of a. Uh, if you open up, open the book up, so this is like page six here, and then this is page seven over here on the left side. So the nodo is the middle, and that's where your pages fold into each other. So it's important not to put. Um, art or visual elements that you want the reader to see in the nodo because it's quite likely that it's going to be um, unreadable, especially if you put like lettering or anything in there. That's a, a very a big no-no. Now, in the future, once I got more used to this, like uh, you'll see here that on the uh, in the bottom corner where I have the uh, frame that goes bleeds off of the page, I bled off to the left-hand side, but I didn't bleed off to the right-hand side. Um, that was because I was trying to keep the nodo completely uh, empty. Now, in the future, I, I started treating the uh, the nodo more or less like I would treat the the edge, and I would give it try to give it some bleed. But e even then, you don't want to necessarily bleed as much as you would on the left hand side. So, 
usually if you look at uh, at Genko, uh, that's a that's a that's a word I should have kept. I should have put in this presentation, but I forgot. Genko is your your uh, the, the um the manga page basically. If you look at original manga pages or manga Genko, you'll you'll generally be able to see to tell if it's a left hand if it's a a, a left page or a right page by where the bleed is running off of. So you see here I have the bleed running off to the left hand side because that's to avoid um, putting a lot of empty uh, useless information in the noto. But later on, once I really started got, got got really started to get used to doing manga, I did do some bleeding into the Noto. But uh, in general, I think it's it's not really something you're supposed to do that often. So um, generally, you want to keep the Noto pretty empty if if possible. All right. So now here's another page with some more uh, terms that we could go over. Here we have tone. It's also called screen tone. Um, and now I'm saying that with an English accent, but I mean Japanese would be something like uh, sukurin tonu. Now I'm not a native speaker, so I, I if you want to get the perfect pronunciation, you should probably uh, f like find um, some native a, a place where you could hear a native Japanese saying it. But I mean in general, it's a sukurin tonu. So that's uh, this here, and it, and we, it's, if you get rid of the screen, it's just tone. So this is tone. Um, now screen tone is a uh, I mean, I, if you want to get more uh, a more specific um, video about it, I did do a video, I believe, where I um, yeah, I did a, I did a video where I was making clouds with screen tones. So go ahead and uh, you could look look you could look that up on, on my channel, and uh, if you want to get more specific about screen tone, but a very quick explanation of screen tone is that it is the sort of gray um, tone that you see in manga, but it's not actually gray because manga can't be printed in grayscale. Um, so it it's needs to be printed in black and white. So you have these uh, these uh, sheets that have, um, I mean, there's many different types of patterns that could be on them, but in this case, it's it's a pattern of uh, of black dots, which makes, makes a gray tone that I then put over this character's hair to make his hair gray. And it's, and I use the same, the same tone for each time this character comes up to give a, a very uh, specific, um, shading to his to sh his hair. I also used it in uh, this character's um, jacket as well. And I actually don't use a lot of tone because I find it annoying to have to cut it out of the sheet and like paste it onto the paper and everything. But there are other manga that you'll see lots and lots of tone and even some manga that do tone for like background effects as well. Um, like I actually I think this effect here on the bottom here, this this actually might be tone as well. Um, I, I often do that Ma um, manually, which is just cross hatching myself. But uh, if you if you do use tone, it could save you some uh, quite a bit of time because it could take a while to cross hatch that. Um, if uh, if uh, if that's the route you go th go through, but you see like over here, I, this is completely manual. That's not tone. Uh, but you'll see other other artists probably would use tone a lot more than I do. I just don't. I I like if if I'm gonna go through the trouble of getting like a a, a cutter and like pay and like get things ready to like paste it and pull it and like peel it off and everything like that's just too much work for me i'll just go ahead and and uh spend the time doing it with a with a pen and ink but uh yeah that's uh based on what you want to do um anyways i uh, don't want to go too much on tone so that's tone um then we have here we have a fuki da, fuki dashi so that's a fuki dashi and uh, i mean in the future i'll probably go oh uh, when i do the uh, the kana series i'll probably talk more specifically about pronunciation of how how this uh, foo sound is pronounced it's it's basically like a it's like in between an f u and an h u so fuki dashi uh, generally in in a roman character to be right in f u k i uh, f u k i d a s h i but uh, fuki dashi is the um i guess what we call this in english uh the dialogue bubble or speech bubble. Is that what it's called? I think it's called speech bubble. So the speech bubble is called the fukidashi and uh, fukidashi is contained seifu. Um, I didn't write that on this page, but I have another page that, that explains what that, uh, that term, but anyways, for now, fukidashi is the speech bubble. And, uh, up here we have a koka sen. So koka is effect or, uh, FX, right? So koka is the effect. And then sen, is a line. So we have kokasen is just like a special effect line, I guess you call it. I, in English, I believe we call them action lines. I believe that's what they're called. So like these are kokasen, these here are kokasen, 
Um, this in the background here, it's a little iffy, but maybe you could call it kokosan. This isn't exactly line work per se. It's more brush work, but, uh, you know, it, it could possibly be called kokosan. And that leads us to our next term, which is uh, kakimoji. And now I just did a whole series about this. So if you want more detail about that, go ahead and check out my uh, kakimoji series. And uh, this is written kakimoji. Kaki is to draw and or write. I mean, um, this kanji here is the draw kanji. Depending on the kanji, it could mean draw or it could mean write. Uh, but kaki is, is drawing or writing. And then moji is, is lettering. And by the way, I may just use moji as a term as well. Moji, uh, like for example, this lettering in here, I may just call it moji at, at time or seifu as in dialogue. But uh, kaki moji is the drawn lettering, which is this kind of sound effects. Uh, um, what is it called in English? I always like, see, this is why I want to teach you Japanese terms because I always forget the English terms. Um, the uh, comic sound effects writing, lettering, yep. So it's, it's, this is a little hard to see as lettering, but uh, this is indeed katakana. It's ha, 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 hu, hu. And so that is his laughing um, as something's going on. I forgot exactly what was happening in this scene, but uh, it's, oh yeah, I think that's when he gets like stabbed through the stomach or something, but yeah, anyways. Next page. So now, well, I guess next slide is more correct, but now we have komawari. And so I see I've highlighted each of these frames, and that's because these frames are called koma in Japanese. And for those of you who can read the katakana, this is koma, koma. And um, so each frame is called a koma, and koma wadi, water, is the verb for divide. So the division of the koma is your, I guess, your layout of your frames. So a lot of times, if you're if you're going if you go to manga school or anything, the teachers will often talk about koma wadi or like how to do koma wadi or like the importance of this type of koma wadi. So this is a phrase that comes up a lot in class. So that is koma wadi. Uh, and coma by itself also is, is used quite often. All right, moving on to another page. Up in the upper right-hand corner, we have haike. And now this is written in kanji. Um, generally, I don't think you see this often written in katakana, although it could be written in katakana or hiragana or something, but generally it's, it's, uh, it's uh, kanji. And uh, this is, just means background, and that's another term that you'll hear a lot um, when you're, if you're in school or if you're just talking uh, about Japanese manga or in Japan or whatnot. Haike is just the background, the non-character elements. And um, something that we found is that uh, many beginner students generally don't don't like drawing haike. So that was something I had to learn. Like you may notice that um, if I go back to the first page, um, well, I was gonna say that uh, my first comic didn't have that, that much background, but it looks like I picked a page that just happened to have a lot of background. So, but I don't know, this, so this page, this, this, if you look at this one here, this isn't necessarily my first comic, but um, you, you can see this comic doesn't have a lot of background. But then later on, once I started uh, getting a little bit more, um, I, I don't know if adventurous is the right word, but uh, a little bit more experienced with my, with my uh, inking and everything, then I started putting a lot more backgrounds in here. And I really enjoyed doing backgrounds actually a lot with a lot with um, with brush work and stuff, and especially like um, uh, what do you call it um, uh, nature nature elements like uh, bushes and things. Uh, architectural elements I don't like as much because it's a little bit too much work. I, that may be different now though because now that I've been doing a lot of uh, um, uh, work in my game in in the game company that I work for, I've been doing more like uh, structures and like uh, buildings and things. So I probably would. Be able to do a little bit better of a job now, but back then I remember I definitely liked doing the, doing like the trees and mountains and like sky and everything. But the uh, the buildings and whatnot, I was kind of like, oh, I'll just draw some squares and some bricks and get it over with, you know. <laughs> but anyway, so that's uh, high gate. And uh, let's uh, go down to this frame here. This is beta nudi, and now uh, beta nudi is kind of it's kind of similar to like tone, except for instead of using a screen uh, a screen tone instead of using a sheet of a sheet that you put on there it's just um, pure black inking so whenever you just take a large a large area of your of your frame and decide to paint it all black they call that beta nudi <coughs> I believe I believe that beta means um, like it's like a matte it's like matte color I believe and nudi is to paint 
So it's when you paint down just pure black, you, they call it beta nudi. And I, I believe that beta doesn't have to be black in as a, as a term per se, but in manga, since there isn't really color, I believe beta is generally considered to be black ink. So just black ink painted down thickly as beta nudi. And this was a big, this like changed my manga a lot, I think. Like, so going back to, uh, this was probably one of my early mangas. This is before I, I really like knew about beta nudi. So you can see I have a lot of, I have a lot of backgrounds here, but they're, it's a lot of kind of like, inking and like cross hatching and stuff and this actually is fairly good but um i noticed that when i went to some of the editors and they looked at my pages one of the things they looked for is they looked at the the general overall page and how much contrast they could see in the page like if it's all just like white like and there's just a lot of white space they don't like that so i found that a good way to kind of just get rid of a lot of white a lot of the empty space and to give like a lot of contrast and kind of guide the uh the reader's eye better um beta nudi is really powerful like just like like this frame here like imagine if if it didn't have this black here how boring of a frame it would be but just because it has this black here all of a sudden it just it it zero it narrows your eyes into the into the elements of these hands and everything and like it just automatic it very quickly makes the page seem a, a lot richer than um than it would without it so i think my my manga has improved a lot once i started to learn how to how to really utilize beta nudi so now moving on to Seifu. I've, I mentioned this a couple times earlier because it's a hard it's a hard word to to uh, uh, avoid. So that could probably teach you how useful it will be if you were to study manga in Japan or to go to editors or do or try to like promote yourself here. Seifu is is just the um, the the dialogue. Um, so it's, uh, it's uh, I know this, it's hard to kind of break down the pronunciation of this, but Seifu, and when you put it together, it's like Seifu. So se ri fu, um, ri. It's it would, be, it would be spelled s e r i f u, but the kind of tricky thing is that the r isn't pronounced like a like an English r. It's kind of like in between an r and an l, and the f isn't really an English f. It's more of like in between an f and an h. So, um, and my pronunciation is probably not perfect, but uh, uh, I, I I pronounce it as se fu, and that seemed to always that that seemed to be more or less the correct pronunciation, but. Uh, I, I want to avoid uh, telling you that my pronunciation is perfect because although I do live and work in Japan and speak in Japanese every day and don't really have problems uh, communicating, um, I, if you want to model yourself off after someone, uh, you probably should try to find... Uh, I mean, the best thing to do would be to just listen to um, native Japanese through like Japanese dramas or anime or... Um, anything, and if you actually have Japanese friends, talk to them or, or whatnot. Um, I will try to put more of these up in the future. Um, I originally, I mentioned this uh, in, a, in some comments earlier, but uh, I originally was a little apprehensive about teaching Japanese because since I am not, am not, am not a native speaker, that uh, I felt that um, um, I would be, maybe not be the best person to teach. But then I realized that actually as a non-native speaker who has learned Japanese enough to be able to work in a Japanese companies, and I've worked in them for... Uh, four or five years now and uh spoke in like pretty much 100 percent japanese through my work days and um i've gone through interviews and everything and so being that i have learned to use the language i probably can teach it in a in a fairly effective way and be able to point out things that maybe a native a native speaker wouldn't be able to point out because um as I learned when I was teaching English, as a, when I was teaching English, there was a lot of things that my students wanted to know that I didn't know how to tell them because I just knew English because I knew English. And when I said something that sounded weird, I just knew it sounded weird. So when I, when my student would ask me, why can't I say it this way? I'd be like, I don't know. It just sounds weird to me. And so I know that that's not the right English. So in the same way, um, at being that I am not a native, native Japanese speaker, I, I may have insights into how you can learn it in an effective way. And there's things that about the language that um, I understand maybe in a different way coming from a Western mindset to learning the language that I can uh, hopefully try to pass along to you. And so in the future, I'll hopefully put up more videos like that. Till next time, be creative and keep drawing.